My name is Kenji Shinozaki from uh, National Institute of Advanced Indoor Science and Technology. So I'd like to speak about the photoluminescence and scintillation in new occipital glass with designed fluid segregation. So my topic is composed of three parts. First, I will talk about the design of fluid segregation in glass and the structure. And the next, I will talk uh, high, highly efficient photoluminescence in oxidized glass. And finally, I will talk the scintillation property of the oxidized glasses. So first, uh, we focusing on the uh, glass phosphor. So why? So it's, the transparent phosphor are required in the LED devices, wavelength converters, phosphor solar cells, scintillators, and so on. So glass can make a desirable shape easily, easily like this. And this shows good luminescence. So there are uh, several types of transparent phosphors. First one is single crystal or transparent ceramics. So of course, the ceramics shows very good photoluminescence, but uh, they have very poor formability. And of course, that transparency is good, but productivity is also uh, not very good. But there are another choice. Uh, glass ceramics or phosphor in glass. That is composed of, of uh, glass and the ceramics uh, uh, hybrid material. Uh, that can uh, show good photoluminescence because uh, the luminescence data is also ceramics, uh, same as the transparent ceramics or single crystal. And the formability is not very bad because it's, it can be pr produced in the molding process like glasses, but much uh, worse than the glasses. Transparency is also not bad and productivity is not bad. On the other hand, glasses, formability, transparent productivity, it's very good. Uh, you can see like this. Of course, not very good, but better than the plastic material, but it's good in the inorganic materials. So the problem is uh, photoremesis property is very poor compared to ceramics materials. Uh, here I am talking about the ceramics means the crystal materials. So I will this advantage compared to crystal due to efficiency, brightness, uh, uh, and uh, with compared to with crystal due to efficiency and brightness because of uh, random structure doesn't allow design emission site. For example, when we adopt the layer as iron or transition metals or for as a medicine center, we can't control coordination number on the surrounding ions. So here uh, we focus on the uh, contain, uh, control the emission set the desirable in glasses. In that, if we succeed that, we can uh, improve this photoluminescence in glass materials. So this is our approach. Uh, to achieve high efficient photoluminescence, there are two approaches in the FF transition in the layer at the top of the material. First one is decrease the phonon energy. The phonon energy is high phonon energy means a high uh, rate of non radiative process. On the other hand, uh, and another one is increased asymmetry safety of rare site. Uh, this increases the uh, radiative process because uh, uh, FF transition in rare earth material is a forbidden transition usually, but uh, it is broken by the uh, asymmetric combinations. So, increase of at the majority of the hair set is also very important. So we, from, we produce the glass hybrid or the fluoride and oxide. So fluoride has very low bonding energy compared to oxide because of the low bonding energy. But uh, fluoride is a uh, strong ionic species. That means uh, ionic bonding is uh, due to a chromic force. It's uh, coordinate symmetrically because it's a non directional bonding. And uh, another one, oxide in glass. Oxide has much higher phonon energy compared to full light. So when we bind with oxide, phonon energy increases and non radiative uh, process uh, is uh, abundant. On the other hand, Oxide, uh, bonding of oxide and metals uh, uh, has a covalent 
uh, bonding. So covalent bonding has a di directive uh, bonding nature. Uh, so uh, we can make uh, the layer site asymmetrically. So just mix it, it's not, it's not very good. So oxyhydrogen gas should have low phonon energy and high symmetricality of uh, layer site. We combine these two as uh, maximum both uh, merit. So we need to well design the structure in glass to realize with the, to the future, but it should be produced in sim simple process because the merit, the advantage of glass is uh, it can be produced by very simple process. So we uh, uh, forecast the, uh, this is my uh, uh, approaches. So for example, uh, Glasses are composed of SiO2 or P2O3 or P2O5, P2O such like uh, this uh, species, because the uh, binding of oxygen and the boron silica phosphorus has a covalent nature. It can be mixed uh, bonding nature with the covalent dynasty. So uh, this can be made from the grass structure. And uh, on the other hand, we can drop uh, some uh, alkaline ions, uh, alkali ion into the grass. And usually they has a high polarization in the glasses. And especially for that has the uh, highest electric negativity. So bonding of BAF is has a high polarized species. And on the other hand, B2O3, it's the difference of the electronegativity is uh, much smaller than that. So uh, this has a uh, low uh, covalency and low polarized species. So when we mix and melt, then we can make this kind of uh, uh, non uh, microstructure in glass. This is a phase separation. And uh, this glass is composed of uh, the uh, carburant, bits of three rich uh, matrix and fluoride rich uh, phase, phase separated island. Uh, this, uh, this is due to the uh, uh, less chemi chemical uh, affinity. And then when we top magnesium, aluminum, or something uh, places between bone and barium, this non-structure will be changed and we can control non-structure. So for example, we, when we top magnesium, uh, the uh, mixed state will be solved and uh, uh, it's form non good non structure. So we focused in on the photoremesis and structure, the last data composition of BAMGPO3F. This is a crystal structure. This crystal is composed of a fluoride layer. And this blue is fluoride, and this uh, green dot is the uh, barium ion. And this too has ionic nature and oxygen side ratio is composed of uh, B2O3 uh, plane and MgO4 plane. So, and this shows very good photoremesis for the recent way we published this work. So this the structure composed of BO3, MgO4, F2 layer and barium and fluoride before places between the layer. layer. So this is just a crystal, but when we melt, melt and make grass from like this composition, this uh, related grass also should have the related structure with this crystal because uh, uh, the glass wants to reduce the uh, contact area between the uh, glass, this uh, oxide and fluoride layer. So this is experiment procedure. We produce the uh, European uh, magnesium fluoride, also oh, barium oxide, here is oxide, and the barbarate glasses. And we produce the uh, glasses by a melt quenching technique. We put the reagent into the platinum crucible and melt the 1100 to 1200 for 20 minutes in air. And after that, we pour it on the iron plate and cool it. Then we can make glasses. And we characterize the XRD, TTATM, synchrotron, X-ray diffraction, Raman, and so on. So here shows the uh, uh, produce the composition. 
sometimes her fluorine evaporated during her melting, but by analysis, I think the fluorine loss is very small. And the present work, we could produce the, uh, this composition. Uh, it mean, X is 10, 20, 40, 50. This glass forming region is much larger than the uh, oxide case, barium oxide magnesium borate. In that case, the glass formation region is here, but we can expand the glass formation region by addition of the fluoride. And we can produce a large amount of fluoride ion containing glass by this technique. So first we talk, uh, we'd like to, I'd like to talk about the glass structure. So we uh, observe the short run structure by a flowing mass animal. Uh, so here shows the barium fluoride and the porate glasses. So you can see the peak attributed to the barium fluoride. And with addition of magnesium fluoride, uh, this peak disappeared and the new peak appeared here. This corresponds to the fluorine magnesium barium site and the fluorine magnesium barium site, uh, different ratios. So this means the, uh, this peak corresponds to this kind of structure. The barium is uh, coordinated by fluorine and fluorine is coordinated by barium. And on the other hand, this peak means the uh, fluorine coordinated in the barium magnesium site. This structure is very similar to the uh, related crystal of uh, PAMGPO3F. Uh, next, we measure the Raman scattering spectra on this. So we can observe the signal from our related uh, bright structure from this uh, Raman scattering spectra. So here shows the uh, uh, six membered rings. This peak is uh, attributed to this peak. So this peak decreases with addition of MZF2. On the other hand, this blue and green, this increase, this ratio is increased. And that means this structure is blocked by addition of magnesium fluoride and uh, pyroborate and also borate formed by uh, addition of magnesium fluoride. And actually here we measure the NMR uh, 11 boron and mass NMR. And uh, the, this one peak is attributed to the three coordinates of boron. So here I show, uh, anyway, this is structure is very similar to the uh, to the crystal of PMGBO3F. Next, we're focused on the medium range structure. So NMR, uh, uh, they are very good uh, technique for uh, uh, evaluate the short range structure. But uh, in order to analyze the uh, medium range structure, X-ray diffraction is a stronger tool. And we need uh, a high energy X-ray diffraction because uh, the, this peak is very small compared to crystalline. So anyway, we measure the uh, high energy X-ray diffraction in synchrotron uh, in, at the spring 8 in Japan and uh, measure this kind of diffraction pattern. And uh, after Fourier transformation, we could observe this kind of uh, radial distribution function. And this peak related to the uh, displacement and the frequency in relation like this. So first peak means first coordination share and the next peak is second coordination share. This kind of coordination share can be obtained from this uh, Fourier transformed uh, this kind of uh, this spectra. So here shows the uh, uh, oxide case, barium oxide, borate, and here shows 10 MGF2 and 20 MGF2. So as you can see here peak and this peak attributed the MGO and MGF2. Uh, of course, this doesn't contain fluoride, so here it doesn't have peak. Uh, but uh, this peak increases with addition of magnesium fluoride. Here, this peak is barium oxide and barium fluoride. We cannot uh, uh, distinguish these two, two species, but they are attributed here. And the important thing is here. This peak is attributed to the barium barium displacement. As you can see, they, these two, 0 over 10, are composed of a single peak, but the, in 50 magnesium fluoride, you can see it's shoulder here. And after uh, 
peak fitting, we could observe the uh, many peaks right here. And uh, this two peak is attributed to the barium barium bonding. And you know, the glass is a random structure. So the peak should be a broad one peak, but here has two peak. What does this mean? So I think the, this, this two peak is correspond to the uh, in plane and out plane displacement or, or in the uh, this barium magnesium borrowed for a light crystal. It means that this uh, AB axis um, displacement and this uh, uh, layer to layer displacement. In order to uh, obtain a yeah, deeper uh, insight from the structure, uh, we obtained the uh, grass structure model by molecular dynamics technique uh, employed with uh, lampas. We melt the structure and the code, then we obtain the, uh, this uh, random structure in glass. Usually, grass is called random structure, but as you can see, the, this structure is not random. As you can see, it's a barium site and fluoride site has uh, this kind of segregation. And uh, in the fluoride segregation, uh, oxide aggregation is observed. Why this formed? It's uh, due to the selectivity for bonding. Yeah, here has the boron. This peak is a pair distribution function, and this stronger peak means the BO bonding. And for BF bonding, there are no relation, correlation. So that means the BO bonding is not formed in this grass. And in magnesium fluoride, this peak intensity is uh, relatively high in magnesium fluoride. And in barium fluoride, a BAF peak is much stronger than BAO peak. So this indicates uh, uh, there is um, obvious selectivity for bonding. Boron binds oxygen, but not F. This is uh, due to a small difference polarization make carbon chemical species better. And uh, barium preferred binds with uh, F than oxygen. Great uh, difference polarization make iron chemical species uh, more stable. And the magnesium profile has lots of oxygen, but the intermediate polarization cation, so intermediate between barium and boron preference. And finally, is, uh, uh, from this kind of structure, uh, from this kind of uh, uh, atomic arrangement. Uh, fluorine ion species between barium and uh, magnesium, not bind with polarity units, nor between uh, magnesium or barium. And from this structural data, because this grass structure model, the grass has a borate considered region, uh, condensed region, and the variety of rich segregation, like this. And the structure similarity to the crystal of BMZPO3 is observed. So, layer like this kind of grass structure is obtained, fastly observed in this glass. And we don't do any uh, treatment, just merit cooling, but uh, the sponsionary tree, this structure is obtained. So why, so finally, this structure is very good for photoluminescence. The fluoride with a high quinonic covalency and high difference polarization in chemical affinity. To, and the fluoride aggregation reduces the phono energy and oxide aggregation provides asymmetricity of rare site. Next, I will talk the uh, photoluminescence. So we dub the European ion, then this kind of photoluminescence spectral is observed. The importance is uh, this ratio of uh, this transition because of this uh, is a parameter for uh, asymmetricity. As you can see, asymmetricity increased with addition of uh, magnesium fluoride. And uh, usually fluoride has very low rest R because of ionic bonding. But uh, this R is very high comparable to the oxide. And this is the impact of medium range of structure ordering. And as you can see, quantum rate is also very high. Addition of magnesium will increase the, mag the uh, quantum rate. So almost 100% were obtained. So I risk this. And the concentration quenching is also very small, and the lifetime doesn't change addition, so much addition of the uh, uh, European because the grass structure can disperse the layers very well. 
so that uh, we can add a large amount of rare earth in glass and uh, uh, we can uh, obtain very high intensity of the luminescence. This intensity is much higher than commercial ethereum oxide, uh, ethereum oxide uh, uh, ceramics. This is very typical ceramics, but the aurora phosphor is a higher uh, luminescence property. So again, the, this fluoride segregation reduces the photon energy and the oxide segregation provides asymmetricity on the rare earth side. So next, uh, I'd like to move on the scintillation property. The scintillation property is described in this uh, equation. And the efficiency is uh, determined by the conversion efficiency of uh, transfer uh, uh, conversion from ionizing radiation to free electron the hole transfer from the host to the remission center and the remission is reactivity. Anyway, our glass has a very high quantum rate. So this has very high Q. We, we don't know the, about the beta and the S, but anyway, this is very good for um, the scintillation prop scintillators. And uh, we top the same ion on this glass. Then we put in observe this uh, photoluminescence spectra, and the luminescence uh, peak is uh, less than 400 nanometer, but this is uh, not very bad for the photomultiplier sensitivity. Here shows the quantum rate. The internal quantum rate is almost uh, 90%. This is very high in glass materials. Maybe I think it's uh, one of the highest value in the glass materials. Uh, here shows the uh, uh, X-ray induced the luminescence peak, and uh, this shows the uh, 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 similar peak position with uh, photoluminescence. And lifetime is 25 to 30 nanometer. Uh, this is due to instrument. So this is uh, uh, this uh, uh, lifetime is not very bad compared to ceramics phosphors. Finally, we measure the pulse height spectra, and when we use the gamma ray, we obtain uh, several hundred photon per me mega electron volt. And when we use the neutron, this was 1,000, 1, several hundred photon per neutron. Anyway, we could obtain the, this glass has a good potential for gamma ray or neutron detection. Uh, these, pro these value are less than uh, the commercial GS20, but this is a, contains a very expensive six lithium uh, isotope, and uh, this is a very expensive species. So we we don't have we our grass doesn't contain such a expensive species. So this is applicable for uh, some ap applications. Anyway, the quantum rate is very high. Improvement with efficiency transfer energy would be the next step. So here is the conclusion. So we produce new oxidized grasses with the decomposition, and we measure the animal, laman scattering, and uh, this uh, data indicates the uh, short range structure is similar to the BMC BO3F, and uh, we measure the high energy X ray diffraction. And uh, this molecular dynamics also indicates the uh, uh, segregation of the fluorine and oxide layer. And the photoluminescence shows a very good uh, photoluminescence quantum yield up to the 98%. And uh, we could detect the uh, X ray and the gamma ray by using this uh, sodium doped glasses. Here shows the uh, acknowledgement. We thank to the Professor uh, Yanagida Kawaguchi and Okugada and uh, Sukenaga and uh, Dr. Koharas for his uh, support. Uh, thank you for our attention. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful presentation. And I uh, here uh, no, uh, give some time to the other professors uh, to ask any, uh, if they have any comments or questions, you, they can ask. So, if anyone have any comments or questions, you can please ask Professor Kenji. Okay. Thank you, Professor Shinozaki. Shinozaki Sensei, very good presentation and very <laughs> good uh, explanation. So, you are working on illumination. So, you are thinking about optical, photon energy, and then counts and 
on that efficiency improvement yes efficiency improvement and then counts as you explained uh, in relation to the bonding yes okay so yes but the, the uh, layer center is surrounded by following so this decreases the uh, uh, phonon energy and uh, this uh, oxide uh, matrix this aggregation from the more structure asymmetrically. It, this is a uh, asymmetric coordination. Here is a symmetrical position, but this is fluoride bind with uh, this uh, oxide layer. So this cannot, this fluorine cannot uh, coordinate the symmetrically. So the, this increases the uh, asymmetricity, then this increases the uh, radiative uh, probability. And for this for any discourage the uh, non radiative probability. Okay, thank you very much. Arigato gozaimashita. Yeah, thank you very much for your comment. Thanks. Thank you, Sorry. Professor Das. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank no you. Problem. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for uh, and, you know, if anyone has other people. So if any other people have any, uh, any comments or questions, you can please ask Professor Kenji. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Can you, can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Ah, okay. Hi, uh, Professor. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a very deep uh, presentation, and uh, actually, the structural and uh, other things that you explained is very nice. Uh, I just want to know from you one thing. As it is uh, glass, and you made it as a as a, uh, one kind of high temperature sintering process. Did you observe any oxygen loss? And if is there, is there any change of color and transmission? Yes, this glass has very good transmission, very transparent, and we measure the composition and rest. At least the fluorine not, does not uh, evaporate it. And yeah, also, I know, I know, we yeah, know yeah. that the uh, fluorine yes. doesn't that much, but, but and, uh, yeah. due to high temperature oxygen, maybe there are some uh, deficiency of oxygen. Yeah, yeah, but with the boron and magnesium barium, this species doesn't form a defect because if, if the defect forms, the, they, are, they are show, must show the, uh, some uh, absorption center, but uh, this glass actually shows very, very high transparency into the uh, UV region. I mm -hmm. think I have the spectrum, but... here and can you see and if it's uh oxygen deficient for from this here shows has shows some uh, absorption but uh, that there are no no absorption here so that means okay. uh, this oxygen deficiency is not formed okay and my second question is uh, is there any uh, uh, what is called that uh, problem with the apparent color no very transparent no, what, what uh, can you control the color? You showed one color which is very, uh, ah, okay, very okay. reddish. Uh, it, we already uh, probably uh, yep, 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 this one, yes, green, yellow, yep. red, and the brown. Okay. Yes. Yeah.